Not funny man Tim Allen. I mean like a comic book or a comic strip or like a graphic novel. Yes, this art and story comes from local artists Juan Holiday and Bobby Morgan. It's an origin tale of sorts. Or maybe it's more like Planet of the Apes where it starts at the end and then wormholes its way back to the beginning. But basically it tells the story of how secret B-sides are in fact responsible for love and intellect here on our very own planet Earth. Wow, pretty deep, huh? Uh, uh. The storyline is a bit out there, and the artwork is very impressive. Altogether, it's kind of like one of those Japanese game shows where you're not really sure what the hell's going on, but it's still thoroughly entertaining. But enough of my jibber-jabber, talking about comics is like fishing about jazz. I think it's books on tape time, guys. Little live reading, what do you say? <clears throat> and now, the gospel of flying saucers, dinosaurs, and love. As read by local sensation Wesley W. Mung. How was that? That was great, that was great. <clears throat> Let's begin. In 1977, Carl Sagan and a team of scientists sent an unmanned spacecraft into the outer realms of the cosmos in hopes that it would be intercepted by intelligent extraterrestrial life forms. The craft carried a collection of one-sided records made of pure gold which contained a wide array of information including music and sounds from the planet Earth. The probability that an alien disc jockey would intercept the craft and find the golden records was infinitely minuscule, and so it floated on undiscovered until long after humans had destroyed the Earth with political talk radio and nuclear explosives. The weary spacecraft reached the unknown edge of the universe, where it was sucked into a wormhole shuttled back through time and spit out at the place where the journey had begun. Come on, <laughs> Planet Earth, approximately 65 million years before human beings and in the age of the dinosaurs. The craft shot out of an interdimensional conduit and collided with a comet. This particular comet had been on course to hit the Earth's surface, which would have decimated the dinosaurs, along with most other species. However, nothing was left of the comet except scattered rubble. Meanwhile, the human-made craft remained intact and hurled on toward planet Earth. The craft survived a rough landing and slid to a stop. Strangely, vegetation surrounded the crash, began to mutate into cute little pink flowers with psychotropic properties. Let's see what happens next. <laughs> the dinosaurs that ate these pink flowers instantly developed hands. Mm -hmm. And upright postures. <laughs> what are these? These things coming out of my mouth. They're a means to connect and explore, exponentiate relative to spiritual embrace of 42. My brain is also a blooming flower. However, your family's kung fu is infinitely better than mine. If I were actually a robot, what would your voice sound like to my robot ears? I am a poem in your arms. Right. Love your neighbor. 
What is France? I don't know, but... So there you go, good people of the internet. The gospel of flying saucers, dinosaurs, and love. Yes, the true story of why we still have dinosaurs today and why we still have love today. So next time you're in town and you see Juan Holiday or Bobby Morgan, give them a great big kiss and say thanks. <sighs> yes, and until next time, I'm W. Mung. This has been Mung on the Arts. Let's get back to them love jams. What do you say, guys? I'm not ashamed no more